Now, we're going to say bye to you, but I, not before. Listen, you're mentioning all this stuff about Mahomes. A guy who, who has done really well against the Chiefs is on next, but a guy who's never sacked Patrick. And you cannot tell me Ooh. that if Patrick isn't 100%, that DJ Reader is going to get his hands on him and bring him down. I can't wait. Right, DJ? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what's up? What up, K? What up, man? What up, dude? DJ, doing? what's happening, man? Not much, man. Not much. Up at the facility, hanging out, getting a lift in. How y'all doing? Hey, doing good, man. I can't, can't wait to see y'all get after it once again this weekend, man. I'm excited about it. Y'all boys up there up front, Hunt, man. 91, 92, 94, all y'all, well, 98, all y'all boys get after it, man. I can't wait to see y'all go to work this weekend. Man, man, we're going to get after it. The guys going to always go get it, man. Yes, sir. All right, Darius Butler, we appreciate you. We'll talk to you, and I can't wait for to see you at Radio Row in a couple of weeks. DJ Reader yep. won't be able to be on Radio Row at Super Bowl because he'll be playing in the game, and he's going to stick around and tell you why next. Don't miss it. <laughs> to throw on second and five. Pump fakes. Now he's going to launch it deep downfield. Intercepted. And that is officially Coffin Nails. I can't wait for this game for PFF. Oh, excuse me? Really? Defensive tackle DJ Reader graded out as the highest among Bengals in their crushing defeat of the Buffalo Bills on Sunday. <laughs> you know, it's not surprised me, and we're lucky to have him right now joining us in his seventh NFL season, third yeah. with the Cincinnati Bengals, the should-be all-pro defensive tackle, my guy Gravedigger, a.k.a. DJ Reader. Hey! What's up? What's up? What's up, Kay? How you doing? DJ, I've had about four coffees here in New York this morning, but I do not oh, need so them. I am so, so you, excited yeah, for so this game. Lit. You're lit. <laughs> oh, 100%. Show me where you are. Are you, where, are you at the facility? Yeah, I'm in the facility. I'm in the, uh, one of our equipment guys in his little office. Um, Sam, that's my guy right here. So he's got a cool little <laughs> poster behind me. He's got he's got like a little wall of fame door right here. Hopefully I never make that door. It's a couple of X names, so I don't ever want to be on there. But Sam's my guy, so he oh. let me use his office for the interview. <laughs> Did you or did you show up at the facility bright and early this morning to make sure that all those fans got their refunds yet? Oh, I don't know if they got the refunds, but I was here this morning ready to go, man, because I got another week. So hopefully they can exchange those tickets for something, though. I, I know they don't get back them processing fees, though. They be on that. Them companies oh. gonna hold the processing fees. That's on them. <laughs> <laughs> That's on them. That's such a good take. I love that. Uh, you took care of business against the Bills. That's not even like the right thing to say. Y'all yeah. killed it. Dominated. I was on, I was on a plane. I was wild. The poor person next to me had to deal with me. I had champagne. I'm going crazy. <laughs> Y'all are out there freezing your asses off out there. But uh, and we, everyone talks about offense. This was so defense. I scream yeah. Coach Lou's name all the time. I'm always talking about you, but to he to hold the Bills, DJ, to 63 yeah. total rushing yards and only 10 points when they were running all over everybody all year, how were you guys able to do it? How did you do it? Man, you know we got the mastermind Lou back there, so he's going to get us some comfortable calls, but it's just really a team effort with us. Uh, there's a bunch of guys who will not do whatever the cost is every play to get it done. Whether that's in the run game and guys on the back end got a fit, they're going to come up and tackle. And whether it's in the pass game, we're going to do our job of clogging up the holes, of getting pressure while also being decent in our rush lanes and being disciplined. And we know that game going to come to us sooner or later. But a lot of people just can't be disciplined and Lou, you know, it's something Lou preaches. So I really think that's what it is. Well, I want to talk about Coach Lou, but I don't know yeah. how to handle this because... Yeah. We want to give okay. Coach Lou love, yeah. but we don't want to give right. him, like, too much love so he leaves We don't us, want right? our secret to get out there too far, right? Well, <laughs> hey, I, I know how you feel, it's, it's, but that's one of those things of progression, man. And, you know, we got to give him all the love because he, he deserves it. He, um, I watched him work his ass off this year, not just the field-wise, the mental, the – he trained every day. Coach Lou in some of the best shape of his life right now. Like, he trains. He works on it. And he tapped in with the guys, man. And as a as a person who plays for him, I couldn't ask for more out of my D coordinator to really trust in us the way he do. I and mean, Like, it's the process he trusts. He don't come over to the sideline. He's not yelling at us. He's not on us like that. He he talking us through everything. He's a real teacher of the game. And, and, and being able to study under somebody like that, it's, it's a true blessing for sure. 
DJ, he's doing some special things over there. It's all of you are. Crazy. Top five defense, three mm -hmm. wins over Patrick Mahomes. Nope, who can say that? Then you hold Josh Allen, like we were just talking about, to their lowest point total the entire season. So yeah. many other awesome, prolific, well-paid, big names, guys getting interviews, all this stuff. They're, they tr they've tried. They have tried and failed to contain these top yeah. quarterbacks in these big games. What is it? Give me, like, one thing that sets Coach Lou and his game plans apart. He got a lot of smart guys. We have a lot of smart guys on our defense, and what he trusts us to do, the different looks, the disguises, I think he's went out there and really handpicked this defense the way he wanted it, and he got – he has exactly what he wants on his defense, and he trusts that process. He makes sure we know we learn so much and understand how to get there, how to go about the game, and never give up on it. And he got the right group of coaches. He got guys who are like, every coach in our defensive staff cares. Their presentations throughout the weeks are awesome. Like, I take notes on all of them, and I never get bored listening to any of them talk about the game because they study it so much. There's a lot of, a lot of good people in this organization on our side especially yeah. that really help us learn the game you did a great job with that for sure there's a there's a lot of dcs or even offensive coordinators that are really good at that but then when they make the head coaching thing it doesn't work like they're uh -huh. just it's okay to be a great defensive coordinator it's okay to be a great offensive coordinator how would because i like that you're talking about his leadership how he is with you guys because that's mm -hmm. what matters as a head coach how would coach lou be as a head coach i think he'd be awesome man you know I wouldn't say that about a lot of DCs because it's hard to, for some offensive guys to respond to defensive guys. I think Lou does a great job of just talking to players, whether that be offense, defense, special teams, anything. I think he could be a great coach of men. So I think he'd be an awesome head coach. Uh, the way he lets his team hold leadership, but he holds you to that standard. He's not going to let you get away with it. And he's going to teach you the right way and you got to do his techniques, but he doesn't want you to be a robot. So I think, that's huge when it comes to understanding coaching and, and with all players. I think he'd be an awesome head coach. I love to hear it. All right, let's go back to this game really quick because I'm watching. All right. And I could not believe that I was hearing these Bengals fans in the crowd. It does not happen in Buffalo. <laughs> and then I could hear it. I know you could hear it, but let's make sure everybody yeah. gets to listen to this. Take a listen. I was like, it was crazy. Hold on. I was like, okay. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. There it is. I do think right now... The biggest difference is I heard it. You've got to get the ball out of his hand. You heard yeah. it. Talk yeah. me talk me through this. What did this do to up, you? I went out there for the first drive, and usually, you know, it's it's silent when the offense is on the field. I went out on the yeah. first drive and I can't hear the call from Logan. I'm like, I come back to the sideline after that three and I said, it's kind of loud out there. And then my boy Josh looked at me and he goes, Well, look at it, all the black jerseys, all the black, black, black shirts in the stadium. We lit out here today. And I was like, oh man, it's up. We about to be on them. And then, you know, we, we went up 14-0. And I was like, you know, we can come out of this drive the way we want to. We can take it up from here. And we did, man. The guys the guys really, we, we stayed on it all night. A lot of communication. But having that fan crowd the way it was, it was so loud out there, K. Like, it felt like the first playoff game here in the Ravens. Like, it wasn't as loud as it usually is be on defense. But it was nowhere yeah. near as quiet for the offense as it should be. Talk to him. Talk to this Bengals team that's booking flights oh. to Buffalo that's probably coming to Burrowhead. We'll get to that in a minute. Talk to these fans and how they show up for you and hey, how much you need them. We appreciate who they nation, man. We appreciate hey, y'all keep turning us up because y'all give us life. Y'all give us so much life. And we playing for y'all. We're not trying to let the city down, the who they nation down. So we out there playing for y'all. We appreciate y'all support all the way. That's from the heart. Y'all do everything for us. Y'all give us this energy to go out there and play every weekend for sure. We see y'all on the Twitter threads. We see y'all. We see y'all on the Twitter yeah. threads. We see y'all everywhere having our back, and we appreciate it. We got y'all back too. Let's talk about these Twitter threads because yeah. you're you are hilarious. But it's not <laughs> even just you, and I don't even know. Like I don't know who's in charge of these guys. Y'all <laughs> tweeting. Nobody has any notes for y'all. There's no class you took. There's no. I don't know what's happening here. But let's start with this. Zach Taylor. I thought it was super interesting in his press conference. Uh -huh. He talked about how he's going to scour every inch of the internet looking for motivation for you guys. Uh, and. I would just like to know from you, what has been working? What has been motivating you? Just, I already know who I am as the person, the player, man, but it's just always funny. I read Twitter for comedy. I, I read Twitter all day. My, 
my girl will tell yeah. you. I, I'll sit there and scroll through Twitter and just laugh all day. And they're like, because it, it's the funniest place in the world. They're, you got no time for sensitivity on Twitter. They ain't caring. But I, I read through <laughs> it and, you know, I find some motivation. I might stick with it for a week. I might hold that little piece of my heart for a week because I need it. I need that little extra push. Like like I said on the tweet, motivation is already free, but it, it it feels good when you see somebody going out there and saying no chance. Like, those aren't even takes you should have. Like, I, as a person, I've never counted just everybody out. I've never even been that type of person. So when I see those type of highlights, I'm like, oh, man, that's that's a perfect one to hold on to right there. That's a good one. That's a good one to hold on to. And, you know, it played in my favor. So that, that's really what it is. I go okay. through and see what they say about me sometimes. So I'm going to say you're welcome because yeah. I handed you that NFL Appreciate safety, you. Eric Weddle, zero <laughs> chance to win. You tweeted about it. But and I, I think we have the tweet, which I loved seeing because it all makes sense. The motivation is working. I mean, I'm sure the handling of the playoff format also is motivating you guys, even though it doesn't even matter anymore. But would you like to thank Eric Weddle right now? What would you like to say to Eric Weddle? Oh, man, appreciate appreciate the just zero chance, Eric. I just appreciate that. You know, amazing player, amazing career. You know, you got us in the Super Bowl last year. I love watching you as a kid, especially with the no gloves, which is crazy to me. But you can't. Zero chance, bro. You know better than that. Come on, man. Zero. Come on, dog. We was just back here. What? What you? Why would you even say that to us like that? You you know those bad takes. You know that's bad locker room talk. You don't even go out like that. You, you're smarter than that. You wouldn't do that as the head coach of your high school. I know that. Oh, oh, I love that. Uh, he'll, he'll be on our show. I'm, I'm, I'm very curious to see if he'll come and double down and pick the Chiefs, which yeah, I would love nothing That's less. Okay. <laughs> he yeah. probably will. That's We're good on that. Though, you know. Listen, people are counting out this team. They did it. This, a lot, ton of people did it last year. Y'all made it to the Super Bowl. This year, you know, it's it's a different team, different season. No two years are the same. Mm -hmm. I get that. Does this no. squad you have right now, does this squad pass the Super Bowl bound vibe check? Really think about it. Is it a better team than last year? Is there more chemistry? How does it feel compared to last year at this time? I think there's more chemistry in our team and everybody here. A lot of people here were on that Super Bowl run. I think there's more chemistry in our team, though, just in general, because everybody's more comfortable with what we have going on. So I... Yeah, I think, you know, we go take care of business this weekend and you'll see something special about us. But I think it's a special team just because of the group. Everybody's gotten older. Leadership's gotten better. So, it, like you said, it's just more of a bond. The locker room's different. Everybody's in there. You're not coming off that, that weird COVID year. It's not the first year of football. It's it's expected and it's exciting. And everybody's a new year into the system. It's fun. It's, 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 it's a fun team. I wish... Everybody could be in our locker room because people wouldn't talk the way they talk if they were in our locker room and saw us together, saw the guys, saw us at practice all the time, saw how we interact with each other, what we're like on a day to day. We don't get that type of coverage, and so people don't see that. But if they did see it, I think that their opinions about us would be a lot different. Do you think you have a better perspective because you spent you know time with the Texans and you came there yeah. now and then they embraced you? I mean that this Bengals team and we tell I, tell, mm -hmm. I remember when I met you, I said what is happening? The Bengals don't make moves like this. The Bengals don't bust out the checkbook and wrap their arms around anybody. And then you became the highest paid nose tackle at the time. So so what is that locker room like? You're saying we never know. What is it like? What makes it unique based it's, off what you had with the Texans? It's awesome. Hey, you. You know, being in Houston, it was a great experience for me. I learned from a lot of great guys, a lot of pros, man. I was blessed to be, be in a locker room that was kind of similar. And especially on the defense side, we just had chemistry. Coming here the first year was the first year was really different for me. And so it was kind of like, oh, man. And then you kind of you get into that next year. And you just kind of see a brewing. Guys in the locker room spending time. Everybody's not rushing to get out of here. We're playing ping pong. And not just some people playing ping pong and – you got quarterbacks on there, specialists on there, defense line, offense line, everybody. Everybody's playing cards together. It's not – nothing's divisive about it. You see guys hanging out with each other that you would never think hang out with each other. We're yeah. all in groups and clicks and group chats. We talk all the time. So it's just different, and it's super competitive. We got a young team. So it – guys guys over here, I can beat you in flipping quarters. I can do anything. They're competitive about it all, and – it all starts from the top. Our quarterback's a dog. 
he's a dog back there. And so having that on offense with the weapons that he has and the guys and the guys he's able to lead, lead the way they play together – and then what we bring on defense is just a special, just a special team man. And I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. You say he's a dog, and y'all renamed. I don't know who it was. You can tell me who ne- renamed Arrowhead Burrowhead. I need to know who was it. I don't even know who said that. I, I, I don't okay. know who brought that one well, out. I that's, love it. that's funny. Oh, right, that's a good one. Okay, but but you you run things on the defensive side. What yeah. is? the defense's relationship with Joe Burrow. You're saying he's a dog. We see that. He is a killer, cold-blooded yeah. to every defense. Does he go does does he, he go after you guys? Is he yeah, how is he him. with you guys at practice? Yeah, and do you we like love it? Him. He play cards with us. He play, we play pool, we play ping pong in there. We go in there, we shoot the basketball, we got a gym in our. So Joe's always around and he embraces the defense. He talked to us. We all talk all the time. It's it's not our locker room, everybody can see each other. You can sit in our locker room, you can see a guy all the way in the corner. So it's not like you can avoid mm. people. He's, he's, the, he's got the first locker to the right when you walk in. So he talks to everybody. He says words. You might see, it's so interesting. You might see a scout team guy during camp be over there, a guy who's an undrafted agent. Joe got the little chest thing set up in his locker. Kid might come over there and get beat. I don't see him lose yeah. too much in chess. He's super good at chess, apparently. They always sitting there struggling with him. So he, he's really good. And so they'll come over there, play with him, and him. He, he's just that type of person. He's very open, but he's he's serious about the work. And he got that yeah. that attitude and that dog and that confidence in him that you love to see in a person. He's somebody you can always ride with. Like if he lead me into anywhere, I feel good with Joe Burrow in my corner. Yeah. I want to squeeze in a couple more questions. I want to get a couple in about this game. Uh, but since that locker room is so open, I got to ask you, have you heard the name Justin Reed come up this week? Nah, I ain't heard nothing this week. You know, Jay Reed, my dog, he had another bad <gasps> take. Can't get that type of bullshit for material, man. And then, not, no right, not know the names and numbers, but Jay Reed, my dog, man, he's a great player. So we'll see him this weekend. I'm sure they're excited mm-hmm. on the offense. I'm sure he's excited okay. to see them, too. I can't see any fouls from Chase. You got to go talk to him in that locker. I don't want to see anything between Chase and oh, Reed no, or whoever. No, no, okay. no, he didn't cool down. Good. <laughs> so listen, so so we we don't know about Mahomes, right? And I'm sure you guys, mm. I know you guys are preparing like he'll be 100%. Oh, but yeah. if he isn't, let's say if he's not 100%, explain to me, help me understand, like what does that mean for you going into this game? Man, don't change our game plan, our game plan to go back there and get after him. And, you know, lock him up on the back end. That's, you know, that's the game plan. I don't think it changes much of what we have going on. He's a dog, man. You, It can say whatever it's going to say. Patrick Mahomes is a dog. He's one of the best players in this league. And he he going to do whatever he can do to get out there and play. And I think when he get out there, even if he's not 100%, it's, it's win or go home. He's going to try to make the most plays out of everything. So I, I don't expect nothing different on our end, even no, no matter what it goes What's up? DJ, you're t- you're telling me if he's not a half step slower that you aren't going to get your hands on him? Oh, we're going to get after him for sure. I, that's not changing. That's going to change whether he's there or not. But, like, he, <laughs> I don't think that that's going to change our game. But he, he amazing. You see some of the stuff he still get away with with one leg. Crazy. I see him go back there and hand, he had to do a skip on the same leg to hand the ball off the other day. So, I mean, I, is it going to change much I of what know. he got going on? Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. He's a ball player. He's a ball player. He's a gamer. Well, you're a gamer, and I cannot wait to see oh, you. I hopefully, we, I, maybe I'll show up at Burrowhead this weekend. We don't know who called it that, but it wasn't you, and that's Pull all up. that matters. We got to go, though. We got to go. We gotta, our show's over. Our show's <laughs> over. I'm getting in trouble. They're yelling at my ear. DJ Ritter, right. one of my favorites. Right. You know that. We'll see you. I'll see you in Arizona, my friend. All right, okay. I'll see you. Bye.